I've got these two pieces of acoustic foam. These were in the shed, which was the boys' music studio. That's actually going to become my wife's office, so that should be a, a pretty nice transformation started in a week or two. I have to make some windows. It should be a fun project. But anyway, for now, I really don't have any place to put these, and I think it's about time I try to get a little bit better sound quality in the shop here. So I'm going to picture frame these and hang them on the ceiling right here. These pieces of foam measure 29 and a half by 39 and a half. So I'll cut a piece of quarter inch plywood an inch and a half bigger than the foam so I can picture frame the plywood and drop the foam inside. I've got the plywood panels cut to size, and I'm going to trim them out with a piece of sassafras. I believe that's what this is, uh, simply because I have it in the shop. And it's pretty straight, and I should have just enough for this project as long as I don't make any screw-ups. So I'm going to cross-cut the board to a rough length first for my short run, and then I'll use the table saw to join the one side. Because the board is pretty straight, I should be able to put this side against the fence, clean up this side, flip it over join the board and then I'll rip my pieces at an inch and an eighth. To use the table saw as a jointer, I've got my best side against the fence. This looks pretty good. I'll take a little bit off of this side. I can flip it over, take some off of this side, and then I'll put this side against the fence to cut my molding. You're basically looking for the best side, and even if you have a little bow, you can usually put the bow against the fence and just take a little bit off each time, flipping the board, and then eventually you should have a nice straight edge. So this is something I often do if I don't want to deal with the joiner or if the jointer's not hooked up or the dust collection's not hooked up. It's just kind of a, a simple workaround. Now that I have the molding made, I'm using the chop saw with the sacrificial fence. I'll put the molding right up to the kerf and make the first cut. Now hold the end with the 45 flush with the edge and pick a mark for the second cut. This is the nice thing about the sacrificial fence. I'll line the mark up with the kerf, back it off just a little bit, and make the cut. And I'll attach the molding with little wood glue and one inch nails. Using the hot glue seems to work pretty good with this foam. You definitely want to use a lot of glue though. And this isn't the best glue gun. It kind of takes a while to heat up, so I have to work a little bit and then give it a maybe 30 seconds to get hot again and, uh, and then put down another line. But you want to use a lot of glue. And hopefully uh, when I come in tomorrow, it won't be sagging down from the ceiling. I must have inadvertently stretched it a little bit as I was working from this side to here, but I think I can just get some 
glue down there and then convince it, maybe start with this corner and, uh, and work, my, work my way to here. A lot of glue, that's what's really key. I'm going to install these by screwing them to the floor joists, which are 16 on center. So I'll find the center, which is 20 and a half. And from that mark, I'll measure 16 inches on this side and 16 inches on this side. Now I'll pre-drill an eighth of an inch hole at each mark. I've already installed one, so I know that if I keep the edge flush right here, then I'm good. And I'll attach these with inch and or two and a half inch cabinet screws. Okay, well it's been two days and so far so good. The foam isn't falling from the panels or falling from the ceiling or sagging in any way. So I think I'm gonna be good. My son did a similar project and he used the hot glue so I really don't anticipate a problem. This foam, I really don't know where I got it. The next projects or the next sound panels that I make, I'm going to use one by 12 by 12 acoustic panels that um, my son gave me a link, or that's what he used. They seem easier to use, they're not that expensive, and I'll have a link to, to where I found them on Amazon down in the description below. I do anticipate having to make more panels to really notice a difference in the sound. This project was more of a proof of concept, just to see how easy it is and, and kind of wrap your head around it. There's a few changes that I would make, or at least one big change, and that is I would wrap it the molding and then put the plywood inside it to cover the edge of the plywood. This project doesn't really matter so much because it is on the ceiling, but I'm thinking about making panels for the front of these doors, some other areas in the shop, and then you wouldn't want to see the, the end grain of the plywood. So that rabbit in the back of the frame would cover that up. One of the reasons why I didn't do that is I would have to add a quarter of an inch to the molding to do that and I didn't have enough wood to, to make the molding if I added that quarter of an inch. I had just enough to make enough molding for this project. And, and really, like nobody's really going to see it. Now, full disclosure, I did screw up on this project. When I was attaching the first panel, I drilled the holes in the wrong spot. So that's, that happens. It's all part of woodworking. You kind of have to weigh and measure. Can you live with that mistake? In this case, I could. I could probably go and fill those with plugs and nobody would ever see them and maybe I'll do that, but I doubt it. Um, but anyway, that's all part of woodworking. Everybody, everybody makes mistakes, including me, and um, you just try to anticipate uh, what could happen and, and then not do that. So of course I didn't make the mistake when I hung the second panel. Uh, I guess that is it for now. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about what's going on, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I will be posting uh, basically a photo post about the honey harvest that I'll be doing this weekend. Uh, that post will come out next week. And uh, I'm just trying to get a little bit... Um, I'd like to put things on the website that maybe I don't share here, or maybe a little bit of both. So I hope that you'll check that out. You can go to johnpeters.com and click on the newsletter. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. If you would like to build the furniture for your home, visit my website at johnpeters.com and check out my furniture project plans. These professional step-by-step -step plans, along with video tutorials right here on YouTube, will help you build high-quality furniture that will last a lifetime.